everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of What's Up, Doc? Dr. Funkenberry, are you on the line? Check, check. One, two, one, two. How's everyone doing out there? How's it going? How's it going? Well, we have uh, seem to be on a morbid streak in Hollywood, and uh, this week is no exception. I know we've had some sad news with Rue McClanahan passing today, or yesterday, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it seems kind of more recent. Um, yeah, Rue McClanahan of the Golden Girls passed away. She had a pretty um, heavy stroke earlier this year, um, kind of been battling for her life, and she succumbed um, early Thursday morning. Um, now Rose, Betty White is the only one left who's had some major success lately. Um, I kind of remember my grandmother would watch like uh, the Golden Girls on Saturday night, and before heading out, I kind of overhear some of the jokes that they would say, kind of being surprised that these old women would talk about it or talk about the stuff they talked about. Uh, do you watch? Did you watch the Golden Girls, or do you still watch it? I I still watch the Golden Girls, and I absolutely love them. And you know, it's funny when I first watched Sex and the City so many years ago, I was like, this is just like the Golden Girls, but just you know, ris- risque for today's audience. And you know, B- Blanche Rue McClanahan's character is really the original Samantha. Um, so I have a, I have a great fondness for the Golden Girls, and I'm definitely definitely sad to hear about her passing. Now, which uh, Sex and the City character is Dorothy? <laughs> uh, probably Miranda. I would say Miranda, yes. Okay, let's not get into that. I mean, it's it's sad that Rue is no longer with us, um, but uh, she at least will live on with those shows and other stuff that she left us. Yes. Another TV legend, though, that we uh, happened late last week was um, Gary Coleman passed away, yeah. and now, wow. of course, there's uh, interesting too. It's a brain hemorrhage. Uh, he passed away. What couldn't take out Brett Michaels took out Gary Coleman. What's interesting is a few tidbits that I found out through people that know Todd Bridges um, is actually Gary Coleman died on Todd Bridges' birthday last Friday. Um, what's interesting is, is you know, uh, the wife pulled the plug on Gary uh, the most interesting thing is, is now we're finding out that she really wasn't his wife, that they divorced secretly two years before, but she still had power of attorney in the situation. What I don't like is is that I kind of heard rumors about it, and it was to- totally true when the 911 call came out. She was disgusted with all the blood that Gary had coming from his head after he fell, and she was just like, I can't take him to the hospital. Um, she's not feeling well. So Gary, while bleeding from the head, having a brain hemorrhage, he freaking drove himself to the hospital. Oh, man. Uh, say what? Now, wow. Now, was telling me something about her also not having enough money to pay for the funeral because of... Uh, she's telling uh, his fans to send her money because she doesn't have enough money for the funeral, although she'd be bragging about how that she would go on these shopping sprees in Vegas and have extravagant extravagant shopping sprees. Uh, And she's she's saying that uh, it's because Gary, you know, couldn't get life insurance because of his kidney problem. Um, Maybe you shouldn't have been spending all that money on stupid shoes. I just, it just sucks because all these deaths happen and it's not like, it's very rare where it's like Rue McClanahan where it's from a stroke or Ronnie James Dio. It has to be all this freaking speculation and other stuff on it. It's just really sad. It makes a, a horrible situation that much worse. You know, Gary had a hard life. You know, you can say he was a spoiled actor, but uh, even, even the money he made off the of different strokes, you know, his original parents took, and they're trying to get involved. They want the body now. Um, just got to kind of hope that he's... A, he definitely, definitely always struggled, and uh, I will just say for the record that I actually voted for Gary Coleman for governor when he ran for the California seat. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he did not win. He lost out to Mr. Schwarzenegger, but I did vote for him back in the day. I can tell you how seriously I took that election. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, may, may he rest in peace. Uh, mo- moving on to uh, brighter news, uh, we had some uh, movement in the world of Prince this week. What's, what's happening there? Yeah, let's talk about something cool, something funky, because 
the regular media probably won't be touching this, so let's us have do it. Okay? <laughs> um, I'm, down yeah, with that. I'm down with that. You know, we were uh, given some information from a little bird a few months ago about printing on the cover of Ebony, and it's always good to see prints on the cover of something, even if it's good housekeeping, I wouldn't mind. Um, so, uh, yeah, the cover came out. We, we got sent it, and um, Prince is looking cool, you know, uh, throwing those titanium balls in the air that he's got, just kind of flaunting them a little bit. Um, but I'm kind of I'm kind of worried, you know. I, I love the brother. I'm kind of worried about, you know, when you talk about religion, and you can't really get on that because, you know, anyone's religion, no matter what it is, you can't really get onto it because they're coming from a pure place. The whole thing is it always can be misconstrued, and I worry about that sometimes. Now, speaking of Prince, um, I went to um, Hollywood Forever Cemetery on Sunday. And they showed purple rain, like in the grass area where there isn't bodies, you know. But you know, I always said Prince's music was so funky it could wake the dead. So I think that there was a few spirits dancing around the jungle love and let's go crazy. But it was so cool, you know. I was, I was expecting maybe like 300 people, 400, 3,000 people showed up, and a majority of them were under 21. You know what I dig about that is like Prince is finding a new generation of fans through other stuff through YouTube being a little bit more lenient on it, and through other things, because he doesn't really get played on radio, but people are still find, finding about, out about him. What I really dig is I dig the younger fans, because it seems the younger, newer fans, I should say. Because it seems they're not so biased, not so jaded when it comes to them. Let's just say it, we, it looks like we're going to have a very purple summer coming up. Prince is on tour, eh. on the cover of Ebony. We're hoping to get some new music. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna move on uh, also to another brighter topic, another favorite team of yours, the Lakers, who uh, <laughs> won the first game of the finals last night. Uh, so what's tell me about that? Yeah, that's the only purple and gold that I care about. <laughs> uh, they did pretty well. I still think, although a lot of experts are thinking the Celtics are gonna pull it out, I think the Lakers are gonna end up on top. There's too much legacy talk. Even though Phil Jackson's won 10 championships, if he can't beat the Celtics, that's who he's going to be remembered for. Same with Kobe. There's too much on the line. When you have perseverance and desire, it's always going to win on the end, despite of uh, uh, the arrogance and uh, defensive prowess. So that's well, what I, I think. Turned on the last, uh, <laughs> I turned on the last, I think, 20 seconds of the game last night, and I saw Kobe sink a ridiculously long three-pointer. Uh, yeah, that was like I the saw, nail on the cop. <laughs> exactly, and I saw a stat that said, uh, you know, 73% of the time the team that wins game one wins the championship. So, uh, Especially when it comes to Lakers, because Phil Jackson teams in the NBA Finals have never lost after winning wow. game one. So Kevin Garnett was more like Kevin Garnett, Garnett last night. <laughs> and uh, lastly, a big old shout out to Al and Tipper Gore, uh, who who aren't divorcing but they're separating. Don't know what yeah, that what, means. What, is, what does that mean these days? Like, why not just say you're getting divorced? <laughs> I don't know. Do they believe in the sanctity of marriage? Because no one else seems to. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe uh, former President Clinton is coaching him on his PR or something. I don't know. Just, came across I feel your pain now. Don't let me yeah. have a little night with Tipper and uh, see why they call her Tipper in the first place. Hello. Well, on that on that bad impersonation note, uh, we're gonna oh. wrap up this. <laughs> we're gonna wrap up this week's edition of What's Up, Doc. Also, a special shout out to Breaker Box for allowing us to world premiere their new video to Nobody Gets Me. Bangin', and hopefully, we'll be bringing you a lot more world premieres in the future. Very cool, very cool. Dr. Funkenberry, as always, thanks for the funk and for the info. Everybody out there, thanks for listening, and have a great weekend. Keep it funky. Okay.